the, the nine to know. I don't, do you have any thoughts on that too, about making sure you kind of schedule that, that time or we got to come up with a game plan plan that has got to have some specifics to it. Yeah. I mean, I, I would go back to a little over a year ago when, when I first started with Katie, um, you know, one of the things that I was struggling with that, you know, it kind of, kind of my deterioration a year ago, I think started with, with burnout um, and just taking on a little bit too much or a lot too much. And uh, you talk about, you know, how those stressors can become, you don't even realize how stressed you are until maybe it's too late and, and you need some additional help to, <laughs> to overcome it. But um, one of the things that, you know, I, I've talked before about how each, each session she'll give me homework that we both agree on. So it's sort of like a, a spoken contract between the two of us that I'm going to work on these things. Um, but one of the things early on and, and still, you know, depending on how it's worded, um, is to make time for yourself. And, you know, for me, it might have been, you know, taking half an hour or an hour to exercise or, you know, to go hike. I, I enjoy like the rail trail, for, in, for instance. I haven't done as much of that recently because I've been golfing more for my R&R, for my &R, uh, right. but that could fall into it. Um, it could be taking time to, you know, to do your mindfulness or to watch a TV show or play a video game or um, listen to music, any of those things that make you happy. Yes. Um, <laughs> now, on the other side of the spectrum, um, I have a tendency to get addicted to some of those things and get obsessed with making time for some of those things. So you have to find a happy medium. Um, but we literally put on my homework uh, for a long time to make time uh, for doing those things that make me happy. And for somebody else, it might be a totally different set of things, but those are some of the things I enjoy. Yeah, I think that I appreciate you sharing that because you're right. I think that the key in that is it has to click and, and resonate. It has to it has to make sense for me. You know, what are going to be those things that are going to recharge me that are going to bring me some kind of just kind of some joy and meaning um, and some kind of recharging time for me or whatever that may be or relaxing time. But just being able to make that time. And sometimes it's just, you know, sometimes people say, I, can, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. And this is where we really want to encourage people. You have to you have to make that time. Uh, because we get caught up in the whirlwind of life sometimes and we just kind of keep going and that part gets kind of left to the wayside but that also then therein contributes to this kind of that setting up of um, just not feeling well not doing well and then sometimes that's for a day or part of a day which can be absolutely normal and natural for stress because we got so many different things that are happening in our life that can be absolutely um, just part of the you know related to what's happening then but but if we don't take care of ourselves over time, that starts to chip more and more away at our kind of core. And um, we're gonna find that it's not just a couple hours or an hour or a moment that we're not feeling well, doing well. Um, it becomes a day, it becomes more than one day, it becomes more than two days, it becomes. So the idea of self-care is really preventative. It's really just kind of how do I care for myself along the way so I can do the best I can to be at my best um, on any given day. And sometimes that varies. When I say be at my best, it doesn't mean I'm running on, you know, 100%. I am ready to go. No one runs at 100% all the time. Um, and so we, we, we do our best, the best we can. But part of it is making sure that we do some of these things, you know, that, that we, we care for ourselves, that we, we can just kind of make that time. And then whatever those specific things are, you know, I have a friend that she, she loves gardening. And she showed me her garden one time and she's like, she's like this master gardener. I'm like, I went back, she's naming all these flowers and taking me around the, the backyard. I was like, this is fantastic. It's beautiful. But for me, I wouldn't know what to do in terms of <laughs> figuring out how to do that. That would not be relaxing and recharging for me. But for her, it was her getaway. It was like a sanctuary for her. And it was very peaceful. But for me to be the one to do that, I'm doing, that's probably not going to be for me. So it has to, it has to resonate for you. You and I talked quickly, um, before we got on today, you know, I had a chance to take some time, two days, you know, my, you know, my wife and I went to visit our daughter in college and that was great. We had a great lunch and just that, that just it was fantastic. And then we went to the, to the beach for uh, uh, two days. And what I did on that beach was just nothing. I just sat on the beach uh, and, and I shared this with you, Daryl. 
I took a video, so I did do something. I did a video of about 30, 40 seconds of just the ocean and, and the, you know, the water and the sounds, all of that. And so when I have a moment or I just like, ah, oh, I'd love to get back there, I play that. It's like 40 seconds of peace for me. Now, someone may say, I don't like the ocean. I don't like seagulls. <laughs> I don't like sand between my toes. So that's not going to work for you. I would say, where, where would be your place? Where would be the place for you to go? And sometimes it can just be in our minds and we can create that kind of vision and imagine where we are and be able to kind of go there for a few minutes, even if it's just 30 seconds. The research will show you if you take that kind of break, you're going to only help yourself. Uh, um, but it's, it's a matter of making sure that you create the space. We got to hit pause, you know, and I know we're going to run out of time here before we probably get to all those nine. We certainly want to do that. We the can first put them up one, on the screen at the end. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be I able to do ahead. that. And I'll, yeah, I'll make sure that I, you know, share that with you so you have them and we can pop them up there. But that first one is simply reminding ourselves and one another, not just ourselves, but one another, if, 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 we're, if we're with others, to encourage others to make sure we press pause, press pause along the way. So we can just, Take a walk, breathe, step outside. Uh, I have a friend, and you know, and, and people, my team will say, "Oh, Mike's going out, and he's going up, and he's going to be staring at clouds today. He's going outside for a walk." And I started doing this. It was this was another um, uh, person I saw was a TED Talk one time. He's fantastic on gratitude and just being grateful. Is he does a presentation? If you want to be happy, be grateful. David Steindl Ross is the, is the uh, person that did that. And he talked about stopping and staring at the clouds. I mean, how many people walk around and actually look at the clouds? I, when, I, when he first said that, I was like, look at the clouds. I'm like, look at the clouds. I'm like, but he said, because in one instance, you move from that instance, those clouds will never, ever be the same again. And so I was like, hmm. So after that, I went out and I started looking at the clouds, the walking, taking it all in a few minutes. And I found that I love staring at clouds. This is pretty good. And sometimes it will remember, if you remember from childhood, sometimes kids will lay down in the grass and they're out back and they're just looking at the clouds and they're, they're thinking, they're imagining what are those clouds like? Or they, they start seeing shapes and things like that. And it, it can, it can some, for some, it'll take you back to that time. For me, I just, I was like, it just, it's just very peaceful. Again, someone may say, Mike, I don't like clouds. Not a big cloud fan, not a big beach fan. So it has to be what, works for you. Um, but I just share those kinds of things because those are things that are small, doesn't take great resources to be able to do it. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of taking a moment, closing our eyes, and just kind of going to the place that can bring us some, some peace. Absolutely. That, that's awesome. I'll give you one real quick thing. Just yeah. because it's here, you know, one of the things that Katie had on my list was to move my work environment to somewhere that I enjoy, you know, for a day or, or for an hour or whatever, which is Starbucks. I'm going to hit them up for some advertising after showing this. Oh boy. But, yeah. uh, I, I love I Starbucks too. Yeah. But I can't really do it now, you know, with, uh, I get, you're not, I mean, well, you can be in, in the, in the building now, but, uh, I think when we started to talk about it, things got shut down, but you know, going somewhere that you enjoy and, and being in that environment, my story is kind of the poster child of ignoring the stress for a while. And to me, the way that it affected me, little bits of stress started to influence the way you interpret everything without you realizing it. And before you know it, you spiral into negativity, it builds, it festers, and then you're in a, in a full blown mess. Um, yeah. So not to yeah. bring us down <laughs> to end the episode, but, uh, but that's what, happened to me by not doing that self-care and self -care taking a step piece. back right and that's what you and I are talking about today and what we're going to start with next week on those types of things that you can do to make sure that doesn't happen to you yeah and I think I think it'll be a great way to kind of you know as we close today we'll, we'll get a chance to follow up uh you know this is this is what I love you know we, we get a chance we get started we, we talk about some things and we're, sometimes we're just not quite sure where how much time we'll spend on whatever the topic is um, but I think these are really important conversations, you know, and we talk about, you know, we started talking about self-care. So I think we're actually ending on a, on an up note that, you know what, no matter where we may have been, where we may have started, maybe, maybe where we are right now, there's hope and, and you're not alone. And there are some things that you can do. And sometimes it doesn't take great, um, you know, resources to be able to, to do certain things. Sometimes it's the smallest gesture 
that can make the biggest change. Uh, and we'll talk more about that. So I look forward to that. We'll, we'll get more to that nine to know. We'll share it with our, uh, our audience members and uh, even the, the growing resilience tree. I'd love to be able to share that. And, and uh, so people can kind of you know, take a look at that and say, oh, that one makes sense. That one doesn't. That one will work. Maybe. I don't know. But you know, all of those kinds of things we can, we can share. And it just creates um, the opportunity to add some things to our, uh, our game plan uh, or our toolbox. Uh, a little hope, a little support. 100%. Yeah, we'll show that here on YouTube as we close today, and I'll share it on radio as well. And then you and I can pick up with that next week and, and get into that. What's next on, on your schedule, Mike? Is it uh, refueling, recharging? It will be refueling, that basic <laughs> need of making sure we get some food and nutrition. So that's going to be uh, refuel time. So that's what's on the schedule. That's perfect. What about you, what about you Daryl? What's on yours? I, I need to start putting stuff like that on there. Um, get, getting ready for high school football tonight, which is one of the things that it's, uh, it's a labor of love for me. So I'm going right from this, which I thoroughly enjoyed doing this program with you, uh, right into another one of my passions. So it's a great day for me. Yeah. And I also say this on the air, uh, my friend here, that uh, there is a, a birthday in the air today. And <laughs> I want to wish uh, Mr. Daryl Henry a happy birthday. And I know you're doing what you love when you're going to go call this game tonight uh, with a, it was a Central York. Uh, and is it Central? It's not Central Dolphin. At Central Dolphin. Yeah. At Central Dolphin. But so you're doing something you love. I know you're, you know, you're going to celebrate uh, your day as you go through the weekend. But happy birthday, Daryl. Thank you, Mike. I'm 28 again. There you go. You know, this, this, I love the 20 something, you know, me, you know, me too. So you know, the 20 something is great. Uh, yes. Enjoy, man. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Hey, a pleasure as always. Great to be doing this with you and, and can't wait for next week. All right. Perfect. Me either. Thanks, man. Take care, everybody. For more information on Wellspan Philhaven's tips for good mental health, featuring amazing online tools and apps, as well as tips on staying calm during the pandemic, and videos sharing proven tips on self-care and supporting others during the ongoing pandemic, visit wellspanphilhaven.org. For information on Wellspan's Employee Assistance Program, visit wellspaneap.org. If this is an emergency or you are considering harming yourself, please contact Crisis Intervention at 1-800-673-2496. Additional support is available through the National Suicide Lifeline by calling 1-800-273-8255 or by texting TALK to 741-741. These resources are staffed by crisis professionals and are available 24-7. It's always okay to reach out for help. You're not alone.